and or season one episode one <laughs> yeah so this guy's got a blaster pistol blaster pistol but with like a scope and it's like a tiny scope i wonder what type of magnification he gets on that i don't know you know every one, every time i've played four. a star wars game a blaster pistol the the beams always go in some large scatter it's not very accurate so maybe this is a super accurate one because it has a scope I mean, why wouldn't a, bl- a beam weapon ever be inaccurate? Like, right? Like you'd have the you'd have the laser generator and your barrel for some reason, and then it would just fire at the same spot every time. There's no like turbulence to it, right? Like, it would just well, always be, be to the left. The, the, the real right. problem is if you have a pistol that's super super accurate, it becomes overpowered in video games. That's right. And so that's why everyone in this universe kind of kind of dumbs down their guns because when they when they make their video games, they want it to be realistic. Yeah, and balanced. You don't want everyone running around with a pistol with a scope on it. It's not like Halo 1. Halo 1, that pistol destroyed. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Plus, in video games, like the uh, sniper rifles and the pistols, if they have a scope, they're pretty equally accurate. Whereas I think... You know, a pistol with a scope in real life is probably not as accurate as a full sniper rifle. Is that right? Probably not. Yeah, because there's a shorter barrel, which gives you less time for you to get the angular momentum stabilized. And and you get to get lower velocities, which means lower kinetic energy, which means lower momentum, which means easier for wind to push you around. But, but does any do of that this. apply with a blaster weapon? No. As long as it shoots but, straight... But, the- Maybe it makes sense in that, like, the accuracy is not limited by the gun. It's limited by, like, your human eye. You can't aim well. So if you have a little scope, a little scope in your pistol, so that way you can get, like, a real fine alignment, then pop, pop, pop. Yeah, so a pistol in Star Wars, a blaster pistol in Star Wars with a scope is super effective and very portable. Yeah. Yeah, just don't get your, like, chicken fingers on the scope. Greasy, blurry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. It's like super convenient, super easy to hide. You shove it in your pocket, but then when it's in your pocket, you're like, oh, where's my keys? You get you're like you're just eating with your hands and you're you're greasy from all over your all over your scope. Isn't it I mean uh, I guess you get a holster you know, and you don't shove it in your pocket. The great thing about animal eyes, for example, you know, they self clean. Maybe in the future these scopes will self clean. I thought you were saying that there were animal eyes built into the scope. And so that's self-cleaning. Oh, that's cool. We could do like biological eyes in the scope. Oh my gosh. My gun's called Hawkeye. My gun is called the Eye of Sauron. Whose ship is this? I think Andor flew this ship. Like Cassian flew this ship. But it was borrowed from the junkyard. So it's not. he doesn't mm-hmm. actually own it. I think he just used it. I think. Hmm. I think l- later in the episode, he meets up with that junk maintenance guy who was upset that he used it for bad stuff. Uh, Check out these landing struts. It looks kind of yeah. fragile. Yeah. And very complex. Yeah. You know, I think looks this like looks like... Go ahead. Looks like there's a lot of leverage, a lot of tension on these legs. I bet like a little instability would would make the chip tip. Yeah. Especially because the engines are on the outside. Which even though the center of mass is directly over the struts, having the mass far away makes it tippy. And probably the engines are the engines are where most of the mass is. So it's very tippy. Oh man, imagine taking off like that left wing and then the right wing is like now there's a lot of the mass shifts past these legs and the whole ship tips over. Like you have to like simultaneously take off all the engines at the same time. Otherwise your ship tips over. Mm -hmm. Common problem. Although it doesn't look like it's it's using conventional lift techniques. It looks like it's just using some kind of hover tech. Maybe. (laughs) What's that? It must. Because if it has conventional lift techniques, these legs either need to skid forward because they come to like a sliding stop or they need to be wheels. 
So somehow right. like its forward momentum just kind of stops and it settles down nicely. Sure. Mm -hmm. I wonder why it doesn't just hover above the ground. I mean, like speeders don't seem to have any active yeah. levitation. They just sort of rest above the ground. Um, why don't they use that same tech here? Interesting. I wonder if if land speeders are like actually super energy wasteful, but they're like, well, it's worth it. But for ships, they're like, this is too much, too much mass. Can't levitate it. Not worth it. Then I guess they should put the um, the levitators in the ground. And then, Ooh, just make and a little just, not quite landing pad. Yeah. But then that's landing infrastructure that on a poor planet like this, are they going to have? Maybe it's just maybe just use struts. This plan is poor, but it is well organized. We'll see this in a bit. Yeah, we'll see this in a bit. Yeah. Look at this also, ship this... design. What? What is the like? It's like it's got its like nose up. Like this looks like it's going to be like a skid lander, but then they put a bunch of like tubing and conduit here. Yeah, this reminds me of the Russian shoe spacecraft. Yeah, this thing, the MiG one hundred and five. The MiG one hundred and five. Oh, I didn't realize that that's what MIG stands for. And I think the shoe look of it with that rounded tip is something to do with re-entry aerodynamics. I can't remember. Um, Trying to beat the space shuttle, but for like two people. You see well, this, this was, front? Looks like special. This was um, not, they had, the Soviets had a space shuttle clone. Uh, this was a, a separate thing. Um, this is, what is this? The, anyway, I think somebody, they, you know, I think this is an inspired design. Oh, okay. For, that makes sense. For, uh, yeah. Cool. Anything else interesting to say? What is that? There's two engines on the right side <laughs> here. What is that? Starboard side. Mm -hmm. And one of them looks like a propulsion engine. Um, and the, the, what's the inboard one? What is that? It's got like this cool intake cover. I wonder what that does. I have no idea. Well, I have two different types of engines in a single aircraft. Just the maintenance I, requirements are annoying. I wonder if, <clears throat> I wonder if it's something like a turbo where the inboard engine supplies oxygen for the combustion for the output, but you already, you're already getting air from the front. Maybe it needs supplemental compression. But then I didn't ah. even think that Star Wars engines used airflow. I thought they used something else. These look like air-breathing engines. Maybe this is not a space vehicle. Maybe this is only for hopping around on the planet. Oh, it could be. Yeah. Also, the internal piping for moving gases around is exposed on the outside. <laughs> need to put a cowling on the outside of that sucker. One little bird pops this open, everyone dies. Yeah, it starts spewing gases and you go into a spin, die. All because you didn't put the paneling on. Assuming this is like an Earth-sized planet, that moon, that moon is close. Super close. Were there that's any within, like, effects? Go ahead. I was going to say, that's within the Chandra Shankar limit. I don't know how to pronounce it. Chan the Chandra Shankar limit? Really? Is, I, is it? No way. For sure. It's got to be. It's the Shanta Shekar limit is the size. Of, let me tell me if I'm right or wrong. It's the Shankar Shekar, Sancho, the Sancho Shekar limit is is the size that an object would have to be in order for it to become a black hole. That is not the one I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of the 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 orbital radius within which a moon would become a ring. I have no idea what this is called. It's called a name. There's the black hole one, and then there's the ring one, and I always get them mixed up. Moon, planet, ring, radius, crush, belt. Bam. I think it's um, it's, it's less of a crush and more of a uh, pull apart. Rip. Max, uh, no, oh, minimum. Minimum, there we go. Yeah, do ring system. Click on ring system. Yeah. And then... Uh, 
The Roche, Roche limit. limit. Roche limit. The Roche. Roche limit? That's, that doesn't sound the same at all. That's just wrong. Ah, so they're saying the Roche limit. If a gravitational body is far enough away from each other, then they can have a nice stable orbit. When it gets closer, then the the main object starts deforming the further object, the moon, because of the differential gravitational field. And then if you get close enough to that, you start you start ripping apart that that small moon until it becomes a a belt. Yeah, a ring. I messed up the name of the limit. It's called the Roche limit. And I think this moon here around this planet that Andor is leaving is within the Roche limit. So that moon would break up, at least be non-spherical at this point. Um, I guess this could be some force perspective going on, but it looks very close. Force perspective. <laughs> that moon's too close. No, force perspective. I mean, it could be force perspective, right? Where the moon is actually quite far away from the planet, but because of the... Well, no, I'm saying Star Wars force, like force perspective. Oh, you're saying the somehow a, a dark lord of the Sith is making us see the moon as too close and then messing with our understanding of the universe so that we don't know what's going on. Yeah, that's the true power of the Sith. Mm -hmm. It's that subtle persuasion and be like, wait a minute, that moon's too close. And actually some evil shit's going on somewhere else. That's right. While we're trying to figure out why this moon is within the Roche limit, uh, they're off conquering the galaxy. Force perspective. <laughs> what a subtle, <laughs> what a subtle evil power! Like, what can you do, Darth Plagueis? Like, I can reincarnate people. Like, what can you do? Uh, I can change how people see things. Like, if like like big because it's close. <laughs> I mean, if you could do that for space objects, not a big deal. But if you could do that for any for objects, oh. oh. Actually, I mean, it's, it would be very good power. Like, like Palpatine can f force lightning, but like I can force make you question reality. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's pretty good. Even if it's just like, is that how, how big is that? Is that Statue of Liberty? How tall is that? I don't know. Get you sucked up an entire day thinking about it. Mm -hmm. mm, productivity, like gone. So uh, this is the junkyard where Cassian lives. This is the junkyard. Cassian lives. Yeah. What are those wires hanging down? What are those? Those, are those wires? Ways? I don't yeah. know. I wonder if they're like anchors. If it gets real windy, doesn't blow the ship around. That's crazy. That can't be right. So they've anchored down some junk because <laughs> they don't want the junk to go away. It's not a junk. That... It's a home. It's a kind of trashy one. Yeah. Also, if this planet is so poor, wouldn't this this particular ship be a... I don't know, pretty nice place to live. And yeah. Andor leaves it unguarded for significant periods of time. I'd live I there. Mean, on, honestly, like, he probably does not have an HOA. He doesn't have to do lawn care. Uh, no, he doesn't have to pay for trash service. Just, just huck it, huck it outside. Just yeet. So, like, it's a pretty nice place. I'd live yeah. here. Look at these, he's got these two, like, balconies up here. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think he would get that place stolen from him. And or not. Okay, next one. I think that Ten I seconds. think that's not a valid option. It cannot be and or not. It has to be <laughs> it has to be or not. <laughs> so uh, this is an image of some backward ass people on a backward ass planet watching some People crash. I mean, what the heck? Wait, is, I don't is know what to say. This Cassian, like when he's younger, not this girl, like he's somewhere else. Is that Cassian mm -hmm. when he was younger? Is that what we're saying? Or are mm -hmm. they just part of a different part of the story? It might be a different part of the story. I'm not sure. It could also be that uh, that woman who does maintenance on pod racer engines and aircraft engines. Oh, maybe she's them. Maybe she's yeah, maybe. one of these kids when she was younger. Yeah, maybe. I think it's not quite revealed yet after episode one. Hmm. I wonder what happened to the ship. Why is it yeah. Why is it burning? I think, yeah, I don't know. 
And I guess the kids are going to set off to go find it. And I think this ship would be way downrange. Because right now it's pretty far away. And then it's going like continuing on. It could be 20 miles away, 50 miles away after it's all said and done. I mean, it... Yeah. Go ahead. It could be at the horizon. Like it could be... It could be... It could stop burning by the time they get there. <laughs> That's right. And they went, might not be able to find it. Yeah. Without the smoke trail. Mm. I guess once it hits happens often. a big plume, but... A plume of blood and oh, a plume of smoke. I think this does not happen often. These people in this village don't see that happen. Very much at all. They're, suffic- they're sufficiently surprised and excited that it's not like a normal occurrence. Right. And they knew, but they did know how to comprehend it. They were like, oh, that's a ship that's coming down and it's, and it's uh, you know, damaged. And so... It's going to land somewhere. They weren't like, oh my gosh, magic. Magic. So. It's a sky, sky rock. Hmm. They don't know it's made out of metal. I wonder if they have metal there. Like this group of people. Or everything's just rocks and sticks. Maybe, I mean, maybe they have scraps. So they don't know how to make metal, but they have scraps available. Oh yeah, that, that, that's what I mean. They don't necessarily have to be able to forge it themselves, but if they have like knives or whatever. This is the inside of that ship that Andor's living in. Again, it's so nice. I think he would get that stuff stolen from him. Somebody with a group and guns would come in and take this as a place to live. Yeah, or he doesn't barracks. have a lot going on in here, but it's a beautiful blank canvas. You could really make this place nice. You could really make it your own. That's right. So if there's some like local gang leader he would want this place it's free rent free mm-hmm, it's nice mm-hmm, mm-hmm. get you know keep it warm and or is away on another planet somebody would just come in and take it yeah put up a curtain see these like these are like the rectangly boys along the wall put up a nice like heavy curtain there and then on the on the other side you point that that dome glass part up to like the sky and you get like nice a nice little like moonlight romantic spot there oof Oof, this would be nice. Wait, wait, wait. How, how are they pointing the, the up to the sky? Uh, just by having the ship, you know, like belly down. Then you get the top of the ship, this like glass dome that'll be up towards the sky. And you make a little, like, a little romantic, romantic nook in there. So is, in this picture. Is Andor the guy or what's the planet called? I don't know what planet he's on. Oh, wait, wait. We know what it's called. It's written on the, when they land. I'll, I'll get it real quick. This will be worth it. Ma, Morlana 1. Okay. Wait, is that the name of the planet or is that the name of the corporate structure? I think it's the planet because it's like Morlana 1. Okay. That's my guess. So my question on this, uh, this scene here is this city has very organized cables. The streets are fairly clean. Like, is there a really well-working government in this town? Seems like it's pretty organized. I think so. It's like, yeah, it's like dirt ground, but maybe the soil there is not very grippy in your shoes. So like like certain types of beaches, like the sand doesn't stick to you. Maybe it's like that. So like it's dirt, but I'm okay with that. The key point to me is that it looks like, like you know, beaten paths and nice clear open walkways. No like tripping hazards, fire hazards. Look, looks pretty good place. And I was seeing the cabling up here on the upper right. Fairly organized, not just every which way, but, you know, above head height, not no dangling things, no clusters. Fairly well. It's like they have regulations. Mm -hmm. Nicely controlled electrical systems. Mm -hmm. So at first I was getting the feeling like this is kind of a backwards village that kind of does whatever it wants. But actually looking at it, everything's pretty organized. So it does what it wants. What it does is. Good municipal systems. That's right. Which means there's like probably like a council, a city council with a city hall. I want to go to a meeting. I wonder if it rains here though. Like what happens? This place, is this a floodplain? Well, it looks kind of hazy slash cloudy. So it kind of has a moist feel to it. So I would assume it rains. Which just, means that the drainage on this this dirt walkway is really effective, so it doesn't get pooled or flooded or muddy. 
it you know gets the water to leave the, the walkways quite quickly otherwise this place would turn into a muddy mess i'm guessing now that this is a, like an always foggy misty planet but it never rains and it's never like wildly fluctuating in temperature and my guess is that that is because like the ground is dry so it can be moist but never enough to like really soak the ground and then this door is like open and exposed like if you have bad weather you need to be able to close that off so i guess that means that this place always has pretty good weather so you're saying it's moist air with maybe fog or haze, but never like raindrop precipitation. And never like big winds, because big winds would be also, you'd also want to have a door for this. That's right. And there's a lot of loose stuff around in this uh, alleyway here right. that would get, you know, messed up with high winds. So, But you could like run out and slim. grab them, but there ain't nothing you can do about a round brick door. Like <laughs> you gotta, oh, you gotta right, be able yeah. to close that. Or oh, arch, archway, not even a door. So actually, pretty nice place to live. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice weather. There. Clean place. Give me some broadband and some Modern Warfare 2 and we're good to go. No cars and speeders. Like every place is a walking place. Mm. Mm. Pretty good. What an interesting door. It's like two doors that roll into each other and there's like this grid pattern that seems like it would lock into something but it can't lock it because if they roll like that would just break something maybe, maybe they're heavy enough that if you don't have access to the to like a mechanism to open it it's not going to open hmm i wonder what this pattern is to me, they look like, I mean, the doors are so impractical as doors that this has to be some kind of cultural significance. Mm. So maybe the pattern as well means something. I don't know. Wheel C. I'm going to roll with the joke. I wonder I if like they... It. No, I, I, I wonder like if your, your ideas were rolling there. They're turning. I wonder if they're like pocket doors where they like roll into a slot. Or if they just are on the inner wall. I feel like inner wall would be easier to clean and maintain. Where pocket doors, well, whatever gets in there is in there. Inner wall is so dangerous because, like, you just tip over. <laughs> Someone goes to clean it from the inside and there's nothing holding it still. Like, it just falls over on them. Well, I mean, pocket door would be a mess. Like, if ever off track and your wall is broken. <laughs> I, I don't I hope they're not free like free standing on the on the floor yeah. and they just roll on the floor and if anything happens they just tip. You know, there must be yeah. some kind of railing or something holding them in place. Cause somebody's not they're like cleaning the doors and it's like it falls on him and he gets crushed. Take out shit off the rail. Oh, if they came off the rail or got dislodged and you got this like two ton piece now. of stone. Two ton, fuck, four thousand pounds. I guess you can push the car. Never mind. Not if the wheels come off. We'll see about that. Hey, look at this place. Like, there's like water back here, maybe, and then there's like these walls with spiky things and lights point in. I don't know what's going on here. It's, they need such like security. Yeah, I don't know. And are they trying to keep people in, or are they trying to keep people out? You'd think they're trying to keep people out, like there's the, the riffraff out there in the town, and they want to keep the riffraff out of their pristine corporate structure, which, by the way, is enormous. There's these three buildings close by, but if you look in the far distance, you know, there's like huge buildings back there. What in the world is going on? I don't know. I, guess Sorry, that, evil, I didn't say anything. I didn't, all I said was, I don't know. <laughs> evil corporations are just paperwork factories. Paperwork factories. And this, it's like, you can like literally see the structure of their management in this system. It's like like the bottom row is the lower level managers and they look over, they literally overlook the people down working beneath them. And then you have this like central column that nobody cares about. And you have this top tier, this top tier stuff that gets like this open pyramid structure that can see the beautiful ish sky <laughs> yeah i know a beautiful cloudy sky of mist it's better than that than like ground right yeah probably you know how you can tell this is like a corporation building it's like 
you get two thirds of the floors have these messed up floor footprints. Like these, this bottom floor is a square. And then from then on up, it becomes octagonal, which means that like, how are you going to get furniture that fits nicely in an octagon? Like you, you'd be so much wasted space, just trip hazards everywhere in this place. Well, how big is a floor? Because maybe it's not one floor, one thing. Maybe it's so enormous that the furniture is small enough that it doesn't need to conform to the outside walls. Maybe. Sure, absolutely. So you get, imagine this like, like the square face is really big, huge, but there's still going to be someone there, like like somewhere along the way on the corners, there's going to be someone with a weird desk shape to account for it. Or, or like, or if you have, if it's eight sided, you have these like long rows of rectangular rooms, but then you still got these like wedge shapes four times around. Yeah. This is a nightmare for furniture. Well, they got to have a furniture guy in some other building in this huge corporate complex. Mm, corruption, I see. What would a hallway he, look like in here? Uh, it would be a hallway. They would be very good. Uh, there would be. <laughs> it would be like an asterisk. Okay. 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 Or like like a hashtag. Or like a hashtag. Okay, maybe yeah, maybe you're, this is actually a really efficient system. Nobody's ever that far away from a hall from a from a walkway. And then if it's a hashtag, you can put the the elevators and transport mechanisms in the center column. Mm. All right, this corporation, I'm I'm turned around on them. Okay. Although it looks like daytime and these lights are on, which means that this corporation is energy wasteful. Ooh, I don't know if I like that. I mean, these guys do security and they have a ridiculous number of skyscrapers. What? Budget doesn't mean anything. They're wasteful. It doesn't mean anything. So in this picture, I was curious what's going on on that computer screen there. That, yeah. uh, what does that symbol represent? It very looks very imperial. The, uh, the circle with the thingies coming out. Right. It reminded um, me of those doors, that round door. Like well, that's maybe true. this was a partial map and that door is the map actually. Oh. But that, that map, that door was, <laughs> there was nothing <laughs> tricky about it. Like it's perfectly geometric. Maybe that's how the rebels keep track of maps is they put them on ceremonial doors and the Imperials are like, I don't care. God, I don't care. This can't be something real. Like it also actually, looks like <laughs> it also looks like the thing that R two D two put puts his thingy in, and he's like doo, 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 to access data. The port. Yep, his his probe that he shoves into like, fucking any slot he can, yeah. <laughs> any starbase, any ship. Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna put my probe in there. Which, by the way, in the chaos of war and competing political factions, the fact that they're able to standardize software and interfaces like that is amazing. Yep, universal serial bus. Yeah, the Galactic Society of Engineers is on it and probably has great <laughs> continuity through the chaos. Honestly, so like we you get a lot of, bad, a lot of bad rap for having the centralized government, but like imagine if your phone charger didn't plug into the phone chargers all around. Like R2D2, he plugs into everything. That's amazing. That's amazing regulations. Well, maybe it's maybe it's centralized authority creating standardization across you know, everything. Or it could be they figured out data so well that nothing is standardized, but because they understand it so well, everything is able to communicate, maybe. So maybe R2-D2 has like a, his little probe has, oh. is adaptable so well, maybe. He's got like the lock pick, lock pick tool for probes. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't, it doesn't matter the shape or size. How many electrical connections? I'm gonna just put it in and talk to it via yeah. electrons. <laughs> yeah, check out the atrium in the background. It has like this like 45 degree slanted windows. Yeah, it totally matches with the building out this H sided ball. Like there's just these sections that are these slanted windows. Super wasteful. Super wasteful. This is the energy just pouring out the windows. But uh, it feels good. It feels powerful. Corporation. I mean, can the windows be insulating? 
Yes. You're saying energy is pouring out like they've they <laughs> turned they turned the heater up, and you know there's IR radiative and I guess contact flow is, out the is windows. It, is, is it possible to have better insulation through windows than through whatever the walls are made of? I guess so. I mean, depending on their engineering of like what type of insulation went in the walls. Mm -hmm. Just straight up like metal sheets. Okay, yeah, that's going to be bad. So I wonder why they made it windows and not just a, a wall. Keep the workers down. Maybe workers they do really future change it. Maybe they change it in the future once they... They do a cost benefit analysis as they switch from the windows to the walls. Yeah. That keeps the workers in line, doesn't let them look out the window and have hope. It keeps them cool keeps too. Yeah. They don't, the sweat doesn't drop down. Well, they, drop down they the would turn off, not only would they make the windows into the walls, they would just turn off all of the AC or heating because that's wasteful too. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, workers would be uncomfortable, but at least they'd be. Devoid of hope. I think they'd have more fun at work. Why would they have more fun at work? Because it's like a cool place to work out. Oh, sorry, to, to work. It's like a party zone, all the lights off, put on some like disco lights, cool, cool light party. They can be like, <laughs> so the Imperials are saving money by eliminating the windows, but allow disco balls in the office. Gotta have fun while you work. No, we're not gonna, we're gonna see they don't want that. Are these Imperials a corporation, right? Are they pre imperial No, no, they're, they're contractors for the empire. I buy that. Which by the way, if they're contractors for the empire, they must be, must have been contractors for the old Republic before the fall. I'm just a company. Switch sides. Yeah. yeah. I'm just here to make money. Make money and hide dead bodies. Look at these windows. Why are these windows octagonal? Like I get it for a porthole because like the corners are like stress points. I get it in Battlestar Galactica because the corners like a paper is going to cut you. But nobody's touching this. Like why do they do octagonal windows here? Oh, it's not even octagonal. It's like a hexagon, right? You the corners on the bottom, 45 cuts on the top. Right, so there's probably no structure here. It's just a design choice. Unknown. Maybe that's okay. maybe that was the look when they designed it. And now the fad mm -hmm. has passed, and so now it looks dated. Hmm. So know. in this scene, the young guy is reporting that that there was a death of, I guess, two people died and the old guy is kind of like, eh, whatever. Like, honestly, that boss, like, he'd be cool as hell. Like, I would work for that guy. Like, some shit happened and he's like, nah, don't worry about it. I'm like, all right. Actually, I don't know why they're so worried about a death. Aren't they supposed to be the evil corporation and just sweep the corpse under the rug and hire a new guy? Yeah. I mean... Though what happened was these guys went to a bar that was way too expensive for their taste. They got out of line and then they died. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wasn't it like a a whorehouse? I can't, I can't say that. What's a better word for a whorehouse? They went to a, they went to a brothel that was too expensive brothel. for them. Yep. And they got all cranky pants. And then they mm -hmm. uh, fell asleep. Yep. So... I guess it was a big problem. I don't know why this corporate guy got involved, but apparently it was a big problem. I can't remember the explanation. You mean it was a small problem? It was not a big problem. That's right. That's right. No, but in the show, they made it sound like it was a big problem. That oh, it was. Died. It was a big problem for this guy, for the young guy. It was a small problem for the old dude. He's like, yeah, kind of whatever. So the, in fact, the he was like, guy, let's bury it. The young guy should not have brought it up to the old guy. He should have just swept it under the rug. Is what we're saying. Yeah, or at least understood it when the old guy was like, "Nope, we're sweeping it on the rug. Stop it." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Young guy made it a personal vendetta. Mm -hmm. Personal, right. not vendetta. Personal objective. Yeah. In this scene, the boss is like giving the young guy shit for having his tailored uniform, but ain't nothing wrong with looking fresh as hell at work. So what happens is people who look fresh as hell at work are actually evil. So when he dresses up to look good, 
He's evil. Ah, oh, that. Look good at work. Look good all the time. You're beautiful. I believe in you. That the worse you look, the more moral and ethical you are. What is that guy? He like lived in a bell tower. He rang the bell. He was all deformed and shit. Uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. Quasimodo. Yeah. Pretty chill, dude. I knew there was a problem with this octagonal building. Look at this ceiling. Like ceiling, you know, like make these nice square panels, these sound dampening guys, makes it nice and quiet. But then every once in a while, you got this triangle. You're like, why would you build a building like this? You want like a standardized piece. This this reeks of like like the corporate structure of this place. Like one dude's got a triangle business, somebody else got a square business, and then they talk to their architect engineer, like, hey, can you keep us all employed? We got octagonal buildings. Okay. Do you think those triangle pieces, do you think there's only triangle pieces okay, and just, square okay. pieces? Or are there going to have to be other annoying pieces as well? If you make everything 45 degrees and 90 degrees, then all you need is is the isosceles triangle. And I guess right triangle. All you need is that right triangle. Right isosceles? Fucking hell. <laughs> if you make everything rectilinear or, or 45 degrees, then all you need is this these uh, even-sided right triangles and squares. Mm -hmm. so if those are standardized isn't that okay what are the angles in this room i see i, I see what you're saying maybe we just always break make things into squares and and this type of triangle and then you can make anything as long as it's square-ish what's that mean you can't make like 60 degree things like everything's gonna add up to be either 45 or 90 degrees. Well, maybe the ceiling tile maker makes squares. One, one square root, two, one, one square root, two triangles, 30, 60, 90 triangles. So if that's what you got to work with, maybe you can fit that in to the ceiling and it can be standardized. Ah, but the 30, 60, 90 triangles are only for like the ultra elite, not these guys. So basically you can tell how much power somebody has by the type of triangles they have <laughs> the the type of triangles they have in their ceiling ceiling paneling mm -hmm. all right like somebody I... who's somebody who's close to the emperor is like he's got like n-gons and like rhombuses he's killing mm -hmm. it killing it look at that trapezoid Ooh, you got sexy nonagons look at that irregular pentagon <laughs> like and casting's like it's a rock <laughs> i found on the floor <laughs> perfectly shaped pentagon look at this dude's desk this desk isn't this guy doesn't have anything personal like is if he were to leave this job today nothing would be different in this room his personal life is entirely at home and his professional life has nothing personal in it I bet this place has like open office floor plans downstairs. I'm getting that vibe. Mm -hmm. So he's up in his uh, office, sealed off from everybody, but he can look down through those windows to the open office plan, make sure everybody is on, on task. He can see their screens from behind them. I'm, I'm calling it. We'll see what happens later in this episode. Mm -hmm. Apparently they can't do remote you know, bring up the screen of each person whenever they want. Looks like they don't have that tech. Different tech trees. So this is the uh, the boss's office at another angle. Why does he have storage containers in his office? That's right. Storage containers. He's got like five of them in this angle alone, and he's got no bookshelf. Just nowhere he can put them. So are the workers like, we need a place to put these, you know, strong boxes. And they're like, I know the boss's office. Like, what? <laughs> I wonder, I wonder if this, like, there was a shipment to this place and these are his like secret personal effects that he smuggled. Like, and that's why they go directly to his office. Oh, so he's running a side business going on, but he would, would he do that through his office? Like having contraband right out there on the, he's the boss. <laughs> it's not contraband. 
I mean, he's not the boss. He's like middle management, right? I guess is is he the boss of this facility? I mean, he maybe he's the boss of this building, but given the size of the the all those buildings in that picture, there's no way he's like the head honcho of head honchos. He's going to report to the something imperial something, so he's high enough that he's like the point of contact, I guess. Hmm. Just seems, you know, kind of weird. Story. Weird that kinda he's weird got again. like he's the boss, but he's also got it'd be like going to your boss's office and it's like full of cardboard boxes. Yeah, but, and he, if he's the head honcho of head honchos, shouldn't he have like a corner office with a with a full view? He's like. He's got like sort of a claustrophobic office. You know, this is the, the problem workers. of these weird shaped buildings. Where's the corner? Well, if you could maximally corner it, you need to be like shoved in a place where there's maximum corner going on. So that's a point. You know, so you got one face coming in, another face, yep. another face, another face. Yep. The more faces that are that are converging on that vertex, the higher up you are. He's not high enough to get that 30, 60, 90 triangle. That's why he gets a weird office. Agreed. Also, notice when the door is open, or when you go into the door, immediate, you know, six inches of step. Total six hazard. inches of step and you're facing a wall at a crooked angle. You got to mm-hmm. turn. So you step down and immediately have to pivot on a twisted knee. <laughs> you're just asking for people to get hurt. Mm-hmm. Cause that's like almost like a stoop for like an outs- outside of a house. East Coast <laughs> stoops. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't even have a writing utensil. Well, he has his iPad. He has his iPad, yeah. Look how uncomfortable and unsupported that chair is. Mm-hmm. We should never be comfortable as Imperial Minute or... Co- imperial contractor mineral management because you know you could die at any time it's true keep you on your toes off your ass Actually, it looks super uncomfortable if he needs to do any kind of like clerical or administrative work up here he's like a 65 year old man in this horrible horrible chair <laughs> I would like it if he had like a yoga ball you know take care of his spine that would fit with the aesthetic in this room <laughs> he's like totally <laughs> like a yogi he's got his like kombucha in the corner <laughs> not only is he a yogi who is one with the universe he's also a cog in the imperial machine yeah just totally at peace with it mm-hmm. we're all beings in this great universe that works together <laughs> look at this store it looks like like an rpg store like you're playing like the old republic or some one of those rpgs for star wars and you need to upgrade your equipment so where do you go this store (laughs) there's like very few items very few clutter there's no like chewing gum at the front it's like here's the weapons that you could have on display and you know what this town it's supposed it feels like it's supposed to be impoverished and yet their stores and streets are just so well manicured. Look at this. There's not a, like, it's not necessarily like new, but somebody is sweeping the floors here. Like, well, can we appreciate how well that tile is done? That's not a true. single crack, not a single right, unlevel tile. It's just beautiful. And, and it's a hexagonal uh, yeah. pattern, but when it reaches the wall, it's nice and cut. Make sure it fits in there right now. Real nice. And it's clean, not so grimy. Ooh. Ooh. They may be impoverished, but they know how to run a society in this settlement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look at this energy efficiency. You got a skylight right in the middle of the room. It's nicely mm-hmm. designed. Yeah. And they got electrical boxes just hanging out in front of the customer. <laughs> there's an electrical box? I'm just whatever in. standing in front of like he's standing in front of it, but there's like there's like some type of conduit plus boxes like face uh, the customer i guess that's that differentiates it from like being like a dentist's office i can see that too mm-hmm. 
Actually, this would be a pretty good dentist office. Get the, this yeah, curved wall and like reception sits there. And then in the back there, you mm-hmm. had like the, one of them lie down mm-hmm. chairs. Mm-hmm. Is this guy, uh, this guy on the left here, is he looking like a, um, what's the animal? With the eye, like it grabs on trees, climbs around. Chameleon. Look at those Chameleon. eyes. Yeah. Creepy eyeballs. So. Point around in all sorts of directions. Who does he want to kill? These are weapons, right? I, I think so. It's also weird that he's what do you see him? He's got his hand he like ha- tucked in his pants. He has a hand in his pocket. That doesn't mean he's it. plus his penis is on his back. That's Good made point. up. That's made up. That's I don't not know. Real. Maybe I don't know. I'm not a species. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fantasy world. Let's have fantasies. So this is uh, I don't know who this what her name is, but Andor's friend. Uh, and she is a maintenance person for these engines. Is that a pod racer engine on the right side there? I hope so. I hope Andor brings back pod racing. <laughs> but he's, is he's, he doesn't have access to the force, right? So he couldn't do it. Had to be somebody else. I'm okay with, I don't, I don't have to have him be the pilot. I just want to see pod racing as a thriving industry in this universe. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would be right. It's total, total chaos and it's bedding, chaos. and the huts are running it. Of course, you know, super fun. So, does that mean there's pod racing going on on this planet? There must be. There must be a site where they're doing pod racing, which means the huts are involved. Which means this is Tatooine. This planet. It's not, there's no way it's Tatooine. What? So many things happen on Tatooine. It's like this one planet in the galaxy that's just like everything happens. It's a force convergence that's made up. Oh, I thought maybe I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know the lore well enough. It might be, mm-hmm. it might be like artifacts on there or whatever. No, I think that's some like retroactive explanation. Of course it is. <laughs> also, nice bothering me, she is her. I guess what do you call this maintenance facility? I don't know what you call mm-hmm. this. Is so her, her garage messy. Yeah, her garage. Sure. Is so messy. And what yeah. is all this garbage on the floor here? Garbage. Just, it looks like a various I see some, maybe some pliers. I see maybe some parts kind of strewn around. Mm-hmm. Also, she's working underneath this engine that's dangling from the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Does it look secure to you? I mean, I've only been underneath cars, <laughs> which I guess are heavier, but also like they, we have better like mm, structure holding them up. This looks like it's just held up by four maybe wires mm-hmm. that they don't look like steel because, and they don't look that strong because there's like curvature and warpingness to it. If mm-hmm. it was something really high tension, it should straighten itself out. That's right. Mm. Yeah, she maybe I mean, should put on some safety goggles. Yeah, safety goggles. Well, I was also worried. I mean, obviously, if you set, if you hang the engines properly every time, they won't fall. But it just looks like there's no secondary mechanism to keep the engine from falling on top of her. Absolutely not. No. And then it's probably you're probably gonna have to like raise the engine or lower the engine so you can like work on it properly as you're sliding around on her little slider thingy. Cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just looks unsafe. Also the I think lighting. these are these actually like happen. Like people have gantries, and then they have like a remote control, like zzz, zzz, lower it down. Yeah, maybe there's also awesome. be like a ca- a cage that she rolls underneath. So if it does fall, it like clangs onto the cage and doesn't kill her. Maybe there's another tall one next to it. So if she wants to dance, she can just hop in there. That's right. But it's so it's there's no lighting in here, so nobody could see her. Yeah. So maybe you need some like flashing lights, maybe black lights. Unz, 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 unz. Yeah, this is a cool scene. Like, what is going on here? It, it looks like these are how they track vehicles, trap, trap ships, track ships. I think they're also tracking people, because the the evil, well dressed guy is coming to this guy who's like the operator of the this circular screen, and I think he's trying to like replay the Andor killing those two you know, um, brothel patrons. So I think these are like, maybe those triangles are people. 
Oh, is this a city map? I thought this was like space logs. And they're trying to figure out where ships came from. I wildly misunderstood this scene. <laughs> <laughs> but given it does look like it's it's circular, so that makes you think about radar. Yeah. And it doesn't look like a city map, like with these circular streets with crisscrossiness. It looks like aircraft flight patterns almost, not city streets. So yeah, I may I have misunderstood this scene. I have no I don't know and we will never know. But I think after this scene he was convinced that uh he had found Andor. Maybe he was no no maybe he was he was looking at a a ship that left and that was Andor's ship, the shoe. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, and so he's he oh, I, I see so he's saying like this ship moved around. This person died. The ship came back. Like, mm, suspicious. Mm -hmm. What do you think that dotted line is? That's just cutting across the screen. It's labeled, but in uh, Star Wars language. <laughs> I was trying to read it. <laughs> uh, I think that's the center of the road. It's like this dashed white line. So you can cross over it, but only if it's safe. Cross what? You can like overpass. You can like pass someone by crossing over the white line, but only if it's safe to do so. It's different than like a like a double solid yellow line where you're not supposed to do that at all. No, no, no overtaking. So there's a road there, and it's marking the don't over the. It's okay to overtake a center line. Yeah, these guys think, use like American road paintings. It makes a lot of sense. Whereas the other ones are solid lines. Which means those are the solid lines. Means it's uh, the shoulder. The shoulder, yeah. So it's so shoulder. <laughs> it's, it's just a bunch of shoulders. And <laughs> Everywhere, lines. all these vehicles are off roading all the time. <laughs> just like <laughs> here's our recommended street, but we go wherever. Yeah, this thing. This thing is made out of like buttons and a shower valve. Is that that means they got showers with like buttons? Like, oh, what are these buttons for? What are, what are we missing here on Earth in which we might need buttons for in a shower? Like, how could we make our lives awesome with button showers or shower buttons? Like, maybe one, like, pours out and, like, it just fills you with beer. <laughs> Stupid. When you want, like, different scents, like, it makes it, like, like a misty valley and someone else is, like, a spring flower. Like, what if it's, like, temperature or, like, massage or something? This could be, like, a super amazing, like, luxurious shower. I think it exists. Not just uh, faucets with hot, cold, but with like specific, you know, dialed in temperature, dialed in flow rate. I think that exists. Mm. It's just fairly expensive. Like you had a rough evening. Like here's shower mode number seven. Oh, those could be presets. You know, I don't know why this the buttons are so ridiculously analog uh, here, but, you know. I'd buy that. I'd buy it. Interesting that he's selling on the street. Looks like like pretty serious computer parts, and then you know a shower. What would you call it? Control interface. Control interface. There we go. A shower control interface. Yeah, general awares. It's <laughs> just a variety of stuff. This is like another RPG store. Well, I need to go trade parts <laughs> with the local vendor. And I go here with all this junk. Also, it's so organized. Look how nobody's stealing anything. He's very, he's clearly like, here are the panels hanging up. Here are the old boxes of machines hanging up. Here are the pipe fittings. It's just so organized. This guy runs a tight shop tight shop and he knows his customers as well he knows what to put outside on the street and what, what goes in the back that's more expensive keep on the lookout for people stealing which apparently doesn't happen that much because you know these parts city. are just sort of everywhere yeah just another piece of evidence that this place may be poor but so well run so well run yeah, what do you think these I, uh I 
What do you think all these panels are for? Are they like old Republic panels? Interesting question. Are these like scavenged off of old ships? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Does that mean somebody owns that particular ship and is looking for that particular panel to fit into the place where it's supposed to go? Or do people just like rework panels all the time? Just find one that's close enough and then fit it into whatever they need. I guess my, I guess, I guess it depends. It depends on if they're rich enough. If they're rich enough, you get the specific panel. If you're not, then you got to deal with what you ever got. So if you have like, if you need half a panel, you cut it in half, you weld it mm -hmm. shut, connect the electricals behind it. Sure. Okay. But then you're in connector hell, but I guess that was solved because R2D2 can communicate with anything. So you have connector hell, but if you, as long as you, you can always mate them somehow, the connectors, <laughs> how? I have no idea how. Universal probe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess, I guess, at the end of it, like all wires are connectable to all wires. <laughs> like it, it may not be safe. Like if you have a thick wire connecting to a little mm -hmm. wire, like <laughs> that's the problem. Or if you need like well, shielding or something. But like at the end of the day, like you could hook things up. There's also like there's so many buttons on those panels. I want a particular button to do a particular thing, and I want to do that for everyone. And make sure they're well labeled and light up properly. Yep. I have to figure out all the wires coming in and make them yep. with all the wires yep. coming out of the panel. And then I got to test it and maintain it and make sure it's, there's no bends or fraying. This is like really difficult to do. But if they're able to do this here, that means they have the skill sets and their apprenticeships. So actually like mm -hmm. a very well running society. Yeah. And I guess we do see Han Solo and Chewbacca doing that all the time on yeah. the Millennium Falcon. So. Maybe this is a common skill. Just, I don't think they went to school for it. I think they just yeah. know how to do. Star Wars. The future. Very, very high level baseline education. Yeah, very, very high level. Okay, so this guy uses the big guy as like muscle because he's big, but he's like actually like a giant, like he's gentle giant. Like he's not a mean dude. That's discrimination. That's assuming that he's a bad guy. Not cool. Yeah, not cool. This well, does guy, it assume that he's a bad guy or they just assume he's the muscle? He's the muscle. But just because he's big, it doesn't mean he's going to like force you to do something. I mean, he can, right? Because he's big. But he's nice. Mm -hmm. But he's tough. But he's tough. Look at this archway. This archway is like designed for him. Like it's way too tall for a regular human. Does that mean this is his planet and humans are just settling it and taking over? Is that what's happening? Because why would humans make an arch so tall? But also, is it designed for him? Because how could they have two-way traffic? It looks like it can fit one person, single file. I think that's some force perspective. <laughs> oh, so he's, it's even he's closer. He's closer than the, the archway. Mm -hmm. So the archway, maybe if he's standing on one of the walls, he hits his head. But if he's standing midway, he doesn't. Like yeah, or even a quarter like of the way from a the third walls. quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's enough space. Mm -hmm. And it mirrors okay. like the shape of a person. Like I could see aliens making doorways in shape of themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like what we do. We have a perfectly human shaped door in our houses. And. You know, if I if I gain a little bit of weight or lose a little bit of weight, I have to a carpenter come in and change the shape. So you just touched on two things. <laughs> you know, this Japanese game, it's like there's like a foam wall and you have to like get the right pose to fit through it. Mm -hmm. so exactly that. Also, there was like a, um, some society where like monks, if they had skinny doors, so if you got fat, they're like, you're not being pious enough. Get skinny. Mm. Like real thing. So this girl comes in the store. She is like, Put some stuff down immediately. Jacket on. She's taken off. The guy's yelling at her. He's like, "What's going on?" This girl. This girl in blue. She chill as. F like, what do they sell here at this place? Like, this one. So on. We need. They just think there's some sh going down. This this high tension. She's leaving, and then this other person's just chilling, just head bobbing. She got it. She got her iPad. <laughs> she got her eye. What is it? She got her AirPods in in the right ear. Left ear can't see it. She's just jamming in her own self. I know what it is. Normally, the people who show up to this particular store are of a particular class, like the barbarian class or the warrior class. 
but she's of class where she's like a wizard or something. And every once in a while, she needs to go to the hardware store to sell and trade. And so she looks really out of place. She's just like, act natural. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Saying it in an RPG, you're just, you know, not you're not at the wrong store. You're just at the store you normally don't go to. And so she doesn't realize that this is left like a place for ruffians. She's just like, whatever. Mm-hmm. Whatever, mm-hmm. yeah. Whatever. You think she got jeans on the bottom half too? People on this planet look fresh as hell. Also, yeah, it's like kind of moist, kind of foggy, kind of misty, kind of dirty outside. She is looking sharp. God damn. Hmm. Girl, you do you. Oh, good. What was she running out of the store about? Oh, she wants to go make her like contact to the the smoke tower. She wants to go listen to the recording. Listen to the thing. Yeah. Which, 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 okay. So she wants to go talk all super secret at the, with the transmitter. Don't make a scene when you leave. Just casually leave. I'm going for lunch, going to grab a, a burger at the local place. And then you just, you go off. The boss is like, I want to go with you. She's like, <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> but she's acting all su- suspicious. Mm. Not that he, not that anybody would say anything, but like, what if she should go in the middle of the night? Would that be less suspicious? I, I guess that depends. Because if you go in the middle of the night, you're standing out pretty prominently. If somebody like, sees you in the street. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if it's during the day, there's crowds and stuff. You can sort of slip in and out. I'd say daytime maybe is best. Hmm. That crowded smokestack. Well, I mean, but I'm saying like maybe up to the storefront and into the back of the store that she's going to go into. Crowded. Oh, so she goes there during the day and waits until night and then goes up. Wait, are we talking about the trying to not stand out in the town? Or are we trying to say not stand out when transmitting? Yeah. But is night? Well, what, I would say during the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. I'm not a what? Star Wars stealth expert. Well, then why uh, why why is night so important? Mm, just don't want to stand out. But wouldn't it stand out more during the night? She might not get caught, in which case she doesn't stand out. Um, but if she does get caught, then she super stands out. <laughs> <laughs> if you get caught then you're caught <laughs> but the people who own the store when she goes in to transmit know she's going back there she's not sneaking back there do they know that she's going back there for for transmission that's that's what i thought i thought so too so once she's into the store they know she's back there nobody else is going to go see her right true and she's i guess like, it would be suspicious to spend like six hours in the back of the store waiting for darkness <laughs> Mm-hmm. all right so then she, there's like this communications relay up in the middle of this tower she climbs up this ladder and she's well climbing up the ladder and she gets in here and she like she like hooks her leg into the rail the rung and then she like hooks her arm into the rung which is like good it's like secure she's not like flapping around like not using her grip strength to hold her still but like if she slips the rebellion never gets her message like like super important to get the message out but the number one issue is always safety she should have a harness she should have a harness with two hooks with these carabiners and like grab on she could pass out she could take a nap on the slider be totally fine yeah i totally agree basically the if her arm had given out the entire rebellion would never have won yep i mean it's good that she works out she's even holds she's holding it like that but no how much ever does it take to hang by the crook of your elbow I think it's not a lot, but your arms above your heart, losing losing oxygen all the time, struggling, mm-hmm. getting tired. It's like a static hold for I don't know how long she needs to be there. She she should call it in to the local government. They'd send out a safety officer lickety split. Yep. She may be in the rebellion, but she still deserves a safe working environment. That's right. And since that government is so competent, that mm-hmm. problem will be solved very rapidly. You probably relocate that transmitter to somewhere with better reception. Mm-hmm. 
Can you imagine, imagine that? If like the, the city organizers were so focused on their job, they don't realize the implications of like, oh, this is rebellion. They're just like, well, this is a transmitter. It should have good transmission. Is it like fix it up for her? <laughs> I wonder if the local government has contacts with the contractor who works for the, the empire. Probably. I mean, they can't be not in communication with them. So maybe they're part of the apparatus. I wonder how much of that of the empire really cares and how much of it is just like i play both sides it's a job but whatever yeah i, I would just that sounds more plausible hmm. wait a minute this like this this radio station is halfway up the smoke tower exposed to air like what is this is this this is super like high controlled high law of society where like things run smoothly but then there it's like a wild west with electricians like just Electrical cables exposed to rain. Like, this, there are no rules here. Maybe the electricians are so good that any exposure to weather is unimportant. Unimportant. You know, the work, the craftsmanship, and the workmanship is so stellar. They've safetyed their way around it by using high quality mm -hmm. materials and procedures. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if it gets rained on or lightning, totally fine. Yep. I like it. She's okay. talking to the rebellion, but actually she just learned that her mother died. God damn it. That's way Jesus. too heavy. Jesus. <laughs> That's way. Jesus. She looked like a mama and like her kids, her kids school just called that said, and they said that they have like a COVID quarantine concern. No, that's too serious. Still, <laughs> It's still too serious. <laughs> If you turn your head sideways, it looks like she's like laying down, like relaxing her head and her arm. But then she's like distraught because like her boyfriend went to Chipotle, but they're out of guac. Or her boyfriend uh, went to McDonald's, forgot to get fries. She's like avoiding her boss in this ladder. And then she intercepted a resistance transmission. <laughs> she's, like, she's like distraught. Actually, she just skipped leg day. She's like on the phone talking to her nephew and he just stepped on a Lego. She looked like she just called the DMV and realized the wait is going to be like three days. She... No, but the DMV, the DMV at this or the speeder MV, Department of oh, Speeder yeah. Vehicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would be super well run here. There's no wait like that here. Yeah, she just called up to make an appointment and she found out the appointment's going to be a five minute wait. Too long for her. Too long. Not in this world. Mm -hmm. She's used to, you know, administration and bureaucracy that's just smooth sailing. She just learned that Soylent Green is people. So this is the shipyard that uh, Cassian, like, took the ship from to go do his bad stuff. Uh, this this ship in the corner here is an A-wing, so that's a fighter. What do you think these other ships are for? Like this one with the big two engines in the middle here? Is that like a freighter? Why do they have such big engines? I think like it's pizza delivery, but for very large orders. Like interplanetary pizza delivery? Oh, are these interplanetary? I think so. Uh, I guess so. Uh, what about the way? It's hard to, hard to make out ships individually, huh? Just the engines little, seem very, very large for these small ships. Yeah, it's like they're compensating for having very dense materials. Yeah, or maybe maybe there's some kind of like it's a small thing, but it like grabs onto cargo, so it becomes oh, large. and applies mm -hmm. torque around the outside of the center of mass. <laughs> just um, like, like picks it up and they may, just spin around. <laughs> maybe it grabs on the top and grabs on the on the bottom and top. Oh, like a sandwich, so. like a two ship sandwich. Yeah. Two ship shipping sandwich. Look at these cool, these cool, like, um, what is it, holographic, like display names? Oh yeah. Oh, like lights up, changes the name. Cool. Maybe when people are walking through the shipyard looking to buy these little holograms explain what the ship is. Hmm. <laughs> and like, then there's like, these, this thick cable as a trip hazard. Yeah. yeah. Well, don't trip in it. There's several of them crossing the walkways. Yeah. What are they doing? 
<sighs> this I need one, such good organization up on Talao. Yeah, I need one of those like, uh, I don't know what you call them, cable trenches where you can feed yeah. the wires through the cable and then put grading yeah. on top. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Mm-hmm. This ship way in the back looks like a Raptor with huge engines. Mm -hmm. And the one behind that's a Millennium Falcon. That's right. That one of those like little Millennium Falcon sections. Yeah, it does, right? Yeah. Can't really mark out other ships. Oh, well. Okay, so the cranky boss guy is like, where is this person from Canari? And then the guy on the right, he's like, I have census data from six years ago. And then the boss is like, that's an eternity. It's not an eternity. It's six years ago. <laughs> you can't you can't just be wishy washy and make it any old time unit whatever you want because otherwise eternity in every other context of the world and the society is just for all time. What does this guy mean? You guys think eternity means six years? What is this guy like five point three eternities old? You can't do that. You can't, it makes no mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, like we are eternity feet tall. Yep. You switch to t distance and time. <laughs> That's so much worse. <laughs> I mean, eternity means infinity. And okay, I sorry, eternity sorry. Worth of I'm uh, sorry, sorry. I'm c times eternity feet tall. Okay, there you go. That's fine. How? What's your height? It's in units of the speed of light and all time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Comes out to be six. Exactly. Well, I guess we could use that to reverse engineer what the unit of, of uh, eternity is. If it's six, six feet. <laughs> the speed of light. Yep, it would work. Also, did the this worker here, did he just do a really thorough job backtracking records all the way back six years plus ago, found a, a perhaps relevant record and reported it to his boss when asked, and then he chewed him out for doing his job well. Yeah, what do you want me to do? Like, the last census was six years ago. Like, I I, I got I got the most recent one. I'm like, <laughs> what do you want me to do? So the next time he's supposed to not find a record, he's supposed to say, I don't know. Oh, he's supposed to go. the The last census was six years ago, so that's too long ago. I started one. I'm going door to door. I got my my clipboard. I'm asking people questions. I mean, there's so many office buildings. Maybe he can just like get send the workers out for a census. That's right. Literal go getters. Mm -hmm. Also, is that a sandwich? It's not a sandwich. Do you know what I'm talking about in the lower left there? On the left, yeah. Yeah, like I don't think like it is a sandwich. Box. Yeah. What's that on top of his uh, station? Is that a gun? Is that a gun? Oh my god. <laughs> no, no, it's not a gun. No way is that a gun. <laughs> it's not a gun. No way. No way. They wouldn't allow a gun into the workplace. No way. What is this? No oh, it's got to be his vape. Oh. I'm okay with that. Double barrel vape. I like Double that. Double barrel vape. He goes into the nostrils. Mm -hmm. Keep the Jeez. workers juiced. All right, get that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it, it is lunch because the guy on the right is also eating. He got like noodles or something, right? Oh, it's behind. Yeah, it is. It's lunch. Why? They're eating their lunch at the. They don't have a break room. Ooh, and all these exposed electronics. Like you spill yeah. something, it gets behind this dial, this rolly guy. Yeah. Ooh, you're in trouble. Yeah. Oh, and you gotta like take it apart, clean every little piece. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. I'm okay with people I... having sodas at their workstation. Just keep it below the electronics. And covered covered cup, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't see drinks though. So Is a wall the, here? these backward ass people built their village on a floodplain? Shouldn't they be building it a little bit farther away from the bank of this river? Gonna get washed yeah. away. Instead of getting fresh water from the river, they should build a well. Oh well. And also we've learned from the other town that even if you don't have any resources or money, you can still keep keep your uh 
your village well organized. The critical part proper... is that you have to have smart admin. That's, That's right. Thinking about these things, thinking about these concerns, and is going to design the city well. Mm -hmm. Do they have that here? Yeah, so they have this like dirt road, but then there's this uh, branch that's cutting across the dirt road. Let's cut that branch off. And they have children okay. just kind of milling around, not in school. Mm -hmm. Yep. I so, would not trust I mean, the society to them. I would not trust the society. 